don't you believe you're Mary Magdalene just to please AJ or Jesus and so that you can have a relationship with him? Aren't you just blinded by your love for him and doing and saying things to please him? I think this one's a little bit funny. <laughs> just, just the thought that I am blinded by my love for, for AJ or Jesus, Jesus, whichever you want to call him. Because as I've mentioned in some previous questions that we've talked about today, certainly um, when we met it wasn't a magical romance. <laughs> I didn't fall madly in love. I didn't feel blindly in love with him. Uh, in fact, I was really confronted by his level of honesty, by his desire to share divine truth publicly. And I tried for a long time to prevent him doing that, to control him doing that, uh, from, to control him into not doing that. And also it was a bit of a turn off because it was creating so much it was triggering so much fear inside of me that he was being public about who he is and he was um, challenging so many people through his honesty and truthfulness, directness with them. I actually found in the beginning that um, my attraction to him was quite hot and cold because I'd feel attracted to him I feel that he's a, a wonderful guy and I felt attracted to the truth that he gave and I could feel that his character was good um, and he was a great looking guy and all of these things. Um, and then I, my fears would be triggered and I would actually feel quite the opposite. I would feel like I don't even find you physically attractive, I don't want to be with you, I, you know, I don't even really like you is some of the things that I have you know, felt or said to him in the past. So I certainly, it's not valid to think that I've been blinded by my love for AJ. And the love that I do feel for him has grown through me growing in humility and mm. releasing different things from myself, different fears. And because of that, my heart has opened more and I see him more for the man that he really is. Uh, so I, I'm not um, controlled by him. I don't feel that... The only way to have a relationship with him is to believe that I'm Mary Magdalene. I've had a friendship with him since I've known him and for some of that time I wanted to believe that I wasn't Mary Magdalene. Even though I felt it, I wanted to, I, you know, I said that's it, I'm not and I tried to live my life as not, uh, trying to forget what the realisation had exposed inside of me. And I, it didn't work very well for me. I actually became really miserable. Mm. Um, and I did, uh, but through that time, I didn't have contact with him for about three or four months. And then we did have some intermittent contact, but it was purely on a friendship basis. And he was, he was fine with me. He didn't share my belief, and I knew he didn't share my belief, but he didn't force on me that I had to believe that I was Mary Magdalene in order to have a friendship with him. And I didn't really want to have anything more than a friendship with him at that time. And at various times throughout the last five years, I've really only wanted to have a friendship with him because I've found the intimate and romantic and emotional side of our relationship to be really confronting. Uh, so I wouldn't say that I fed, fell head over heels in love with this man um, who made it a condition that mm. I believe I'm Mary Magdalene in order to know him or to be with him. Um, what else can I say about that? Probably that AJ really wants me to be myself. He, he doesn't want me to do things to please him. And in fact, as I've mentioned again previously, when I met him, a lot of my feelings of what a romantic or close relationship should be was based on codependency. And so uh, providing the partner filling some emotional holes in myself, so providing me emotion so I didn't have to feel certain things, and me doing the same for my partner. And I felt that, that I should please him, that I should do things for him in order to get him to love me and care for me. And every time I tried to do that, he stopped me. <laughs> so while I wasn't saying, oh, I'm Mary Magdalene to please him, because <laughs> the, the desire for codependency did not extend to that point, but certainly me um, modifying my desires in day-to-day -day life, like where we should eat, what we should do, those kinds of things, I tried that a lot. 
And in every case, he said, well, no, you don't even want to do that. You're just doing that to please me and I can't, I can't have that. I want you to be yourself. Mm. I want you to experience your own desires and have your own life. And so, um, yeah, I'm not, uh, there's absolutely no conditions in the man that I should be a certain way in order for him to love me. In fact, his love is so unconditional that even at times when I've been quite nasty to him, he's still maintained love towards me and patience and kindness and has never reverted to being nasty in return. So, um, no, I don't feel that, uh, well, I know that. <laughs> I'm, that I'm not just saying something to please him or to, in order to get his love and approval. Because I know that I would have his love no matter what I chose for my life, even if I chose to not be with him, I know that I would have his love. But also, I've had my own experience. I'm having my own experience. And as I've mentioned previously, I was very sure, definite with him that I didn't want him to even impact on my own on my experience and that I wasn't going to be believing or saying or, you know, even entertaining the idea that I was Mary Magdalene unless it was based on my own experience. And I have had and continue to have my own experience. And even if AJ fell off the face of the earth, I'd still be Mary Magdalene. <laughs> so it's not a condition. It's not that... a condition of our relationship. <laughs> yep. Yeah.